We'll kick off the build with the buffer beams, mainly because they're a good introduction to what's ahead, but also because I haven't got any stock to make the main frames from. To start, I've roughly cut out a couple of pieces of 1 8 mild steel and clamped one on top of the other in the mill table. I'll use a NEM mill to clean up these front edges here, and also while I've got it held in this position, I can clean up both ends and cut it to length at the same time, also using a NEM mill. It's worth noting that I generally don't work in Imperial measurements, so for most of this build I will be converting Don's good work from Imperial and into metric. Of course there will be parts I can't do that, I will still be using model engineering threads and I'm sure some of the stock material, a bit like these buffer beams, will also be coming in Imperial. But generally for when it comes to me turning or cutting on the milling machine, or anywhere else for that matter, I will be converting to metric. This is a finishing cut on the front edge, which will be the bottom of the buffer beams. When I finish this long cut along the x-axis, I also cleaned up the far end, the y-axis, so the side of the buffer beam will be at 90 degrees to the bottom. With the front edges and the right edges now finished, I can use the DRO to machine the buffer beams to the correct length. The drawing says 9 and a quarter, which equates to 234.95mm, so I'm actually going to make mine to 234mm. I'm also using a 16mm cutter, so to get to the far end and to cut it to length, that would be the 234 plus 16, which of course is 250mm. Next I use the edge finder to find the front right hand corner here. Now that I've found this edge and i found this edge using the wiggler, I can position the centre of the quill directly over the corner here. So now what I can do using the DRO and this corner as a reference is mark all of the holes on the buffer beam with the centre drill. There are 27 holes altogether. We've got the drawbar centre point, we've got the centre point for the two buffers, and then there are 18 rivet holes for the various brackets, plus another six holes along the bottom, which I think are also for rivets, but I need to double check. As I said earlier, I don't work in Imperial, so all the dimensions from Don's drawing I've converted into metric, and also taken with reference to this corner here. Just for sanity's sake, I will be checking a few of the holes with a ruler before actually marking them with the centre drill. Total length 234, 117 to the centre. Looks good. And 22mm from the bottom face. With all of the holes centre drilled, I crack on and drill them all out to their required sizes. The outward facing rivets on the buffer beams, I'm actually going to rivet them flush and to do that I do need to countersink the holes which I do here with this countersink bit. The two sets of three holes across the bottom, or the front face as it's positioned, need to be tapped out to 6BA I'm always very nervous tapping out these small sizes. I did try originally with both buffer beams together, but it wasn't comfortable, so I've split them now and I'll tap each separately. You might also notice that by this stage I've cleaned up the other long edge, which is effectively the top of the buffer beam, and I've got it here against an angle plate which I'm using as an index. Okay, through. The holes for the buffers need to be opened out and tapped at half by 32 TPI model engineering thread and for that thread I need to drill the hole out to 11.9 millimeters. Unfortunately my homemade tapping guide here doesn't have a T-bar so when it comes to large diameter taps it's actually very difficult to get a grip to be able to cut the thread and rather annoyingly my half by 32 ME taps are not centre drilled at the end so I can't even use a spring follower. 
so please do excuse what I'm doing here with the chuck key. Once I've got the thread started though I do return to more conventional means for finishing it off. For each of the buffer beams there are four brackets that need to be riveted in place. Two are for the main frames, that's the larger of these brackets here. And the smaller ones, actually I'm not quite sure what they are for. They go across the middle, top and bottom, maybe just to give it a bit more rigidity. All of these have been cut from angle iron to the appropriate sizes. The larger ones are 5mm thick and the smaller ones are 3mm thick. The rivet holes on the brackets need to be spotted through from the buffer beams. The easiest way to do that is to actually glue them in position using super glue. And that's what you can see me doing here. I've got a couple of squares and some clamps to enable me to accurately position the brackets and then glue them in place. The real advantage of using super glue is that if I position one of these incorrectly all it takes is a bit of heat from the gas torch to break the joint and I can then reset it correctly. Luckily it would appear that I've got everything in the right place. My approach here is definitely over the top. As we can see I've clamped the buffer beam and its associated brackets onto the milling table and I'm drilling all the way through rather than just spotting. Doing this with a hand drill, with the work held in a bench vise, would suffice. As I called out earlier on, there are 18 rivet holes on each of the buffer beams. The riveting itself is somewhat self-explanatory. The only thing to note is that a little bit of care is required to ensure that the rivets collapse down into the countersink holes nicely because I will need to file those back. To enable the rivet snap to get access to the rivets that sit up against the inside corner of the angles, I had to modify it with the grinder. And because the larger brackets were quite rounded on this inside angle, I also needed to clean those up the file to get the rivets to sit flush on the inside. After multiple hammer blows, thankfully all avoiding my thumbs, this is how the buffer beams look. If I've done it correctly, the rivets will now nicely be filling the voids left by the countersinking. From here onwards, it's more grafting, this time with a range of files. I need to file down the tops of all these rivets so that they're flush with the surface of the buffer beam and if I've done it well enough they should become pretty much invisible. Although I did do the first of the buffer beams the good old fashioned way with the files I did cheat a little bit on the second one and use my rather Heath Robinson belt sander. The results for both approaches were very good. As we can see in this picture here, the rivets are pretty much invisible. To complete the work on the buffer beams, I just need to file out these centre holes so they're square. And it was a fairly simple job using needle files. This brings us to the end of the first of what will be a long-term series of videos covering the build of this loco. The next logical part to approach with this build will be the frames. But the work involved is very much a repeat of what I've already done here on these buffer beams, albeit on a much larger scale. So I won't cover that off in a specific video. We'll come back to those once I've completed them. If you like this and want to see more, then do give me a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button. And thank you for watching.